another video episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts, my little channel on YouTube and my little corner of the general interwebs where I like to talk about knitting and sometimes crochet. Those are my two crafts and also I like to talk about books uh, if I'm listening to or reading anything or uh, TV shows or movies that I'm enjoying and other general life and chatty things that I want to share with you. Um, so thank you for uh, watching this video and choosing to spend a little of your time with me. I really appreciate it. And um, please, please settle in. Get yourself a delicious beverage. I have some coffee right here. Um, and um, But you can have any beverage you like and get your yarn, your hook, your needles, or maybe some fiber and a spinning wheel or your cross stitch, um, embroidery, whatever you need. And um, let's enjoy some crafty chatty time together yeah so um today is monday march 2nd um so it's been a few days more than a week since i last was recording um we had a wonderful wonderful time with my aunt while she was here it was a great visit and um yeah and so uh, things have been just a little quieter <laughs> after um, after that. We kind of took some chill and recover days um, because February was pretty full for us. Um, yeah. So I hope you're doing well. And um, I have gotten crafting done in these last about nine or ten days so this is the state of my socks they're just basic vanilla I'm not really using any um, any pattern just my recipe that fits me um, I usually do 68 or 72 stitches depending on um, if I'm doing stockinette or cables or another kind of pattern. Um, but usually in the 68 to 72 range, these are um, actually 70, 70 stitches. I forgot I added a couple. Um, anyway, so... This yarn is Patton's Croy Socks, which is um, easily available here in the United States at big box craft stores. Um, and I really like it. It's a good workhorse sock yarn. And um, this colorway is called Coastal Stripes. So I've made it a good way down the leg. I'm really happy with these. And that's that. I did order and it, it arrived and I have started adding in a second color for my shoulder wrap experiment. Here it is. Yeah, so it's going to be color blocked a little bit. Um, this yarn is a Red Heart. Their Italian storyline, which is a made, manufactured and spun in Italy with natural fibers. All, all of the, all of these Italian story yarns from Red Heart are natural fibers. This is a blend of wool and alpaca. 
and it's a really good match for the Mirasol Kutama that I had. Um, the weight and the ply structure and everything, it's a really good match. So I'm really happy with that. Um, this is really soft, soft, very soft. I like it. I would get this again. Um, it doesn't come in a ton of colors, but it does come in a few colors. Um, this color, this kind of beigey color is called Latte. Yeah. So, now this is not, um, because this is kind of, I suppose, a, a, a luxury line for Red Heart, the price point on the Italian Story yarns is um, not like Red Heart Super Saver price at all. Um, but it's not, it's about what you would expect for natural fibers and wool and alpaca. Um, it's not uh, more expensive than other commercial natural fiber yarns, but it's definitely not, a, you know, um, like the Red Heart acrylic price at all. Um, this base, the, the bulky base in the Italian story is called Vera. So this is Vera in their Italian storyline. And it's a very nice, it's so soft, so soft. Mm. Really nice. I would, I would use it again um, if I wanted to do a bulky hat or um, bulky mitts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Um, now, there is something exciting. I actually did cast on my branches and buds pullover. And here it is so far. Dee -dee -dee -dee. So just, you know, started at the neck. This is a top-down pattern. So you start with the neck, and I am on the first round of the colorwork motif, and I'm using the super bright green-yellow. And I'm going to use the pink for the middle one, and then go back to the super bright green yellow for the third uh, round of the motif and I'm, I'm having fun with it I'm having a lot of fun with it um, I have filmed a little bit of my color work knitting myself knitting color work so you can see what I'm doing not because I'm a wonderful example, because I am a baby, a brand new baby color work knitter. Or, I mean, stranded color work. I'm a brand new baby stranded knitter, so I'm, it's not a tutorial or like an expert example at all. Um, but I just, I, I thought and some people might be curious because there are different ways to hold your yarn. There are different... Um, you know, not everybody does their stranded color work the same. So um, I just thought you might be curious as to what how I'm trying to do it. Um, and I am holding it in two different hands. I'm holding my main color in my left hand, which is how I usually knit. I'm usually a continental knitter holding my yarn in my left and I'm and with this, my right hand, I'm using the um, contrast color. 
because I did start out as an English style knitter, actually. That was the way I learned. It was easier for me that way. Um, and somewhere I forget when, at some time, I know, a, a long time ago, I transitioned. And I don't remember when um, from English to Continental. And I, um, I do prefer Continental, but I know that um, a lot of people say it, that holding the yarn in both, both hands is an advantage for Stranded. And I think be, so far, I think that's fine for me. Um, it doesn't go very fast, but yeah, duh, it's a new skill. I'm not used to it. It's going to be a little slow. It's a little challenging, but I'm not being frustrated by the challenge. I find it like enjoyable, uh, motivating, exciting challenge. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and the first time I tried color work, uh, around, you know, give or take a couple of years, 30 years ago, I don't even remember how I held the yarn the first time I was doing it. I don't remember if I did one in each hand. I don't remember if I was knitting continental at all at that time. I just don't remember how, how I did it back then. No idea. Um, so maybe if I would, maybe it was the way I was holding it back then. If it was different, maybe that's part of why I didn't like it. Um, I don't know. I notice that there's been a change. We're upstairs now and it's later in the day. Um, yeah, the focus got really bad in the other recording. So I am doing this part over. And, um, yeah, so let's finish talking about my, um, branches and buds sweater or pullover. Here it is again. You may notice that this side is taller or higher than this, and that is because of short rows. I wanted the, you know, most of the time in a sweater or a t-shirt, the back of the neck is a little higher than the front and it helps the neck sit nicer. It helps everything fit a little bit better. And I wanted to do that. It's a pretty common modification to make. And um, the, sometimes designers include it in their pattern, but this pattern does not have short rows for the neck so it is a modification for this pattern and I wanted to do it but I was also feeling lazy and didn't want to figure out the numbers myself and wanted to follow somebody else's instructions so this is a wonderful feature of Ravelry and it can be so helpful that there are many, many project pages for the branches and bud sweater. So I went to the pattern page, clicked on the projects tab, and then in the projects, I in the search bar, I entered short rows and neck to pull up projects that had those words in the notes and the first project that I looked at uh, pointed me toward another project page where she had followed uh, that knitter's instructions for the sh neck short rows that she had done and that Ravelry knitter is Vitz Knits. Yeah, so I followed Vitz Knits instructions from her project page which were very which was very helpful and added short rows to the neck i did not do quite as many short rows as she did i did one less repeat 
but um, I'm really happy with it. I think it's enough, enough building up in the back. I didn't want to do anymore, so I just stopped. Yeah, and there's the phone. <laughs> That's how recording today is going. <laughs> Let's take a sip of tea. Yeah, I'm. it's tea time now. Earlier I had coffee while I was recording. Anyway, so. Yes. And the... I wanted to tell you about the yarn that I'm using. This is from Blacker Yarns. They are a mill in the UK. And this base from them is called Brushwork. And here's my main color. Brushwork is a limited edition yarn they did to celebrate uh, the birthday or the anniversary of their mill. So um, it's a special, unique blend of wool from different breeds. I The labels are downstairs now from when I was recording earlier, so I can't look at the label. Um, but yeah, it's uh, several different breeds, a special limited uh, run blend for this space and it's very soft and lovely and this colorway all the colorways because it's kind of a painting theme to this base for the colors and for the names this I guess they are all oil painting techniques for brush strokes this main color is called Scumble, is the colorway name. And it's a really lovely, like, gray with a little bit of green, um, slightly greenish gray. This pink is called Impasto. And this kind of super bright green-yellow is called Splosh, which I think is such a fun name. And kind of fits, kind of an acid green. I don't know, I just think it it amuses me. Anyway, so this is Splosh, Impasto, and Scumble. Another thing about this yarn, and all these things I'm going to tell you now, are things that I've learned from watching Skein Deer and a couple of other people that do a lot of stranded color work and um, a couple of people who also spin because spinners also know all this stuff. Um, so I'm just repeating to you what I learned from them. I, yeah, I am not an expert stranded knitter and I'm not uh, yeah, but, uh, this yarn is a woolen spun yarn, and woolen spun means that before the, before the wool is spun, that, um, all the fibers are still kind of going every which way random. It hasn't been combed smooth and everything in one direction. Um, so it's still just kind of woo, woo do, 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 every which way uh, the fibers going random directions, uh, which means that this yarn is more sticky. It's got little ends of fiber sticking out. Uh, it's not as smooth as a worsted spun because worsted spun has been brushed and combed so that every all the fibers are laying flat in one direction um, this is not super smooth that way but it's still really soft um, but if it is a coarser wool 
then woolen spun is more likely to be itchy or scratchy um, because it's got the fibers poking but those sticking out little fiber ends also make the yarn stick together and it keeps um, it keeps the stitches in place it keeps um, the color work staying even and um, the woolen spun yarn is ideal for color work it is also because a lot of times with stranded color work um, you might be steaking because you wanted a cardigan but you knit it in the round and woolen spun yarn is the ideal choice if you're going to steak it sticks to itself much nicer and um, you're less likely to have any trouble with anything coming undone so there you go um, yeah that's all I wanted to say about the yarn and the stranded knitting it's going pretty well and I'm enjoying it now uh, it was Sunday last night and I watched the f end of the finale for Doctor Who and wow yeah I'm still processing there were some um, big reveals uh, and I'm still not sure how I feel about what was revealed uh, overall the story part was um, well done and the the new Cybermen look really good and um, yeah and it was well paced it was enjoyable to watch I really like Sasha Dewan as the master <laughs> he is so fun um, anyway so but I'm still processing um, not sure how I feel about everything um, and what they're gonna do with that in the future we'll see but I'm here for the ride this this season was definitely a good ride overall and I am here I'm definitely gonna tune in to uh, series 13 and see what happens next I'm here for that ride and oh, if any of you want to chat about your reactions because after you watched Doctor Who if you're watching it at all um, feel free to um, comment in the under the video and we can have a little Doctor Who chat um, or your projects I'd love to hear about how your projects are going and what you're working on uh, so I hope you are doing well I hope you your family is well and I hope all your projects are turning out the way that you envision them and have a wonderful week coming up and take care and see you next time bye bye um, I don't know. Uh, who knows? That was the phone. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Um, but, yeah, so, and the phone.